All right, so in this clip, we're going to keep working on our area light. All right, so we went through and we talked about, about primary visibility and the shapes of the lights. But now the next attribute we have is the exposure. This particular attribute is extremely important because it will work as the real life exposure of a light. And this for having plausible lighting and more realistic lighting will be extremely important. So how does this work? The way this works is that if you go and increase the exposure, let's say from six to seven, it doesn't mean that we'll increase one level of intensity of the light. It will basically change the exposure, which means that it will work on power of two. At the end, what you're doing from changing from exposure of six to exposure of seven or a seven to exposure of eight means that you are increasing the exposure by two. So if you have a certain intensity here and you change it again to nine, you will have twice as the exposure. And this is because of how lights works in real life. All right, so that's a very important concept. When you go to zero, your intensity level is gonna be equal as one. And when you go to negative one, which is something that we can do in these renderman lights, the exposure is gonna be equal as 0 0.5. That's something really important to keep in mind when you try to dial down your exposure on renderman. So let me take this to a value six and I will start IPR in order to demonstrate the following points. So let me hit my IPR and this will bring in my EAT window. So let me move this maybe something about here. I think this will be enough and I will move this. So the next slider is gonna be your color. And this is in order to do more art directed kind of lighting. So you can add any type of color to your light. So let me show you also a little bit of the exposure. So right now we have exposure of six and now we're gonna go to exposure of seven. So this will increase the level by twice of its energy. I know that visually is not representing that much, but what it is doing, it is basically taking advantage of the energy conserving system that Renderman has as default. So the materials and the lights are physically possible. So you may not see that much of a change, but let's say that we go here to 11 and you can start to see exponentially the change of the value. Then let me go back to maybe a value of 10 here. This is looking nice. And then I will go back to my light and put it a color of, of one or basically a white color. So then after that, we have the color temperature. And this is something that I personally prefer to work more instead of the color. I usually work with light temperature. So what do we get here? We get a enable temperature checkbox, which basically will enable the use of color temperature or the temperature of the light for our, our area light. So let me check that on. And right now it's not doing that much. That's because of two things. One, we may have to restart our IPR render. Sometimes this happens and you have to recache your scene. And the other thing is because the light temperature that we are using is 6,500 Kelvin degrees. This value is measured on Kelvin degrees. And at this point, this is pretty much a white light. So I will give it a try without uh, restarting the IPR to see if we could see something. So I will go to a more yellowish light. So we are gonna decrease the temperature. So in terms of Kelvin degrees, it's gonna be a cooler light. So let's go to 3800 Kelvin degrees. So there you go, it is working. So we didn't have to restart the EAT window, but sometimes it will happen with some of the features because the way it works is that it will cache out the geometry, the lights and the camera. So sometimes you have to push it and restart your rendering. All right, so you can see that now the basic color temperature is around 3,800 Kelvin degrees. So this is something that we could 
basically due to much real life lighting so if you want to have a scene where you have some sort of lighting you can play with this i suggest you to go and study a little bit of lighting the actual real life lighting how, how the spectrum of light works but basically it is inverse according to what we see so right now we're seeing a pretty much warm color in our render however the temperature is pretty much uh, not that warm it is cold so let's say we're gonna do the opposite we're gonna increase the temperature of the light we're gonna go to a value of 9000 Kelvin degrees and there you go you get a cooler light in your screen but a warmer light on the Kelvin degrees and this is a very very important feature and knowledge to have because this is working more as a DP and that's why I prefer to work with color temperature because I feel like I'm doing real lighting and real photography with my renders instead of just calibrating stuff. Sometimes let's say that I want to have this really bluish kind of, kind of key light here working on here I will go and override this so I will go here check that off and I will go and try to find the right color so sometimes it's kind of easier to do that but that's in the case that I really want to do something more art directed you can see that this is kind of a more cartoonish kind of thing so we are trying to get a night scene so we play a lot with the purplish uh, bluish color but if you're doing like BFX work or on other type of stuff that demand a more realistic approach to it I suggest you to go with color temperature all right so I will finish this clip here and continue with the following explain the other attributes for the Pixar area light <laughs> 